Hello, I am Leah Panos, and welcome to my very first uh, virtual concert. And uh, so if I make things a little awkward, just bear with me. Uh, I'd first like to thank the Carlsbad City Library for hosting this concert uh, here on their lovely uh, Schulman stage. And also thank you to Marion Leibowitz Artist Management for finding creative ways for uh, to keep us musicians uh, performing and working at this time. And thank you so much to all of you tuning in at home. I am so grateful for your support. So to adhere to copyright laws, uh, today I will only be performing music that is public domain. So um, I can't wait for the day when we can all be together again in this room and I'll be able to share with you a bigger variety of music, including my arrangements of jazz, film, or popular songs. So. Uh, this time, today, I will be playing early music for the modern pedal harp from the classical era to early 20th century. So the harp is the oldest, oldest instrument in music history, one of the oldest, and it's a significant part of uh, folk music even around the world. But those little, these little folk harps, uh, they're about this size, they're a little more limited in uh, their musical range until the invention of the chromatic pedal harp. Uh, what you see here, first patented in 1801. So uh, I'm not sure if the camera can see here these pedals down here, but we have seven pedals and 47 strings. The, uh, these pedals have three positions, one's for flat, natural, and sharp. And these pedals connect to rods that go through the column of the harp and connect to these rotating discs, and they will um, adjust the tension of the strings. So picture like the white keys of your piano. Um, these are the white keys. And for your black notes, the uh, sharps and flats, you're moving your pedals around to change those notes. So there's actually over 2,000 moving parts on a harp. Here you can hear what happens when I move the pedal and play the same string. So pretty cool. Uh, the first piece of music I played for you was by one of the uh, founding fathers of harp technique, uh, Carlos Salzedo. And uh, it featured just two techniques, actually. One was called the glissando. So that angelic harp sound that you all, the quintessential harp sound you all picture. That heavenly sound, those are, that's a glissando. And the other technique I used was called a harmonic. And it's where I pluck a string in a certain way and it makes it resound about an octave higher than it really is. So this is what a note sounds like normally. Here it is as, as um, harmonic. That's a cute little bell-like sound. So as ambassador of, ambassador of the harp, if you learn anything today, it's the word glissando and harmonic. So I will uh, be continuing here with um, going through music history. So in the classical era of music history, this era is defined a uh, more clear and clean style, lighter and less complex. But the harp was, because they didn't have pedals uh, fully adapted until beginning around this era, that um, they were mostly used as a solo instrument, not featured really in the orchestra. So featured in orchestra, but not used regularly in the orchestra. So. Uh, I will be playing a piece written for the harp by a French composer, F.J. Notterman, in the classical style. This is a sonatina.
right. If you've ever been to Ireland, you'll know that the harp, the Celtic harp or Irish harp, is a kind of a national symbol there and a big part of the Irish culture. So I'm going to be playing two Irish tunes for you. Uh, the first one uh, you'll know as Oh Danny Boy, originally titled uh, London Dairy Air, and that's become kind of an anthem for Northern Ireland. And then I'll be playing another Celtic tune, actually dating back to the 18th century, um, called King of the Fairy. So just imagine this, this big boy is about half its size, and here you go with some Celtic music. on through uh, music history. So these, these are songs being played at the same time during the classical era. These are the, those folk songs um, popular in Ireland. And now moving on to the next era, coming after classical era of music history is the Romantic era. And this now as music has become more chromatic, more emotional, even uh, programmatic, where there will be uh, themes or uh, depicting scenes in music. So this next one comes from another French composer, Alphonse Hasselmann. And uh, this was actually kind of late 1800s, but a uh, romantic era, definitely. It's a, uh, called Spinning Wheel, and it's depicting a woman uh, working on one of those mechanisms, machines, a spinning wheel, and this little melody, this little, uh, she's singing or humming as she's working on it. And so uh, just so you know, don't be disappointed. It's not gonna be me singing today. It's going to be these little notes that pop out amongst all these fast notes of Spinning Wheel.
All right. Uh, continuing in the era, the romantic era of music history, now another medium where the harp really flourished and uh, was very influential in expanding harp music was in ballet and in Italian opera. So I'm actually going to be doing a medley of a couple songs from uh, Tchaikovsky ballets. So the first will be a scene from Swan Lake, uh, followed by, sorry, music situations here, <laughs> followed by um, a cad famous cadenza that you may be familiar with if you've ever seen The Nutcracker at Christmas time. Uh, this is uh, basically a fancy flourish that uh, all harpists love learning. And uh, then I'll be finishing with the waltz from the Sleeping Beauty Ballet. And uh, for those of you familiar with uh, the 1959 Disney classic, animated classic, uh, they do use this same waltz from the original Sleeping Beauty Ballet from 1890. So you may be familiar with this one. So enjoy these uh, Russian Tchaikovsky Ballet songs. That's how you know we're in a live show, folks, because there's uh, plenty of clunkers going on here. We're not editing these out, those out, so um, thanks for having a laugh with me. All right, so I'm going to move on to now the early 20th century, and uh, this is a piece written for the concert harp in 1913, and uh, is actually a student of the composer that wrote uh, Spinning Wheel, 
He was a, um, one of his students at the Paris Conservatory, Marcel Tournier, and uh, he wrote this uh, concert etude. And an etude is a French word for a study, uh, it means study. And um, they're musical, uh, little pieces of music where they will focus on a technique or skill to uh, strengthen the musician. So uh, a concert etude just means it's a little fancier and can be performed uh, publicly. So this is Tournier's uh, Etude de Cancer.
All right, I think 20th, 20th century should have been a good place to stop, but um, actually I have one more for you. Um, as we approach the end of the program, the, uh, my music history buffs out in the audience, or at home, may have noticed I skipped over Impressionism of the late 1800s, and they are correct. Uh, this era focuses on mood, atmosphere, and color, and I tend to conclude my recitals with this famous French Impressionistic song uh, because of those warm fuzzies <laughs> that it creates. So, uh, in English, it translates to moonlight, but you'll all know it as Debussy's Claire de Lune. So thank you again to the Carlsbad City Library for hosting this performance, and thank you so much to all of you at home uh, for watching and showing your support of the arts. Uh, I'm humbled and privileged to be here, so thank you, and I um, miss seeing all your faces in this room, but I look forward to the day when we can be back together again. So stay safe and well, and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs>